everyone. My name is Diego Alfonso, and I'm the host of the Florida Aviation Network, broadcasting in the clear and live from the Howard Hughes exhibit in the Florida Air Museum on the campgrounds of Sun and Fun, located at Lakeland Linder Airport in sunny Lakeland, Florida. I want you to note that this year, 2013, marks the 39th consecutive year that this fly-in expo air show all roll into one has taken place and that is the second largest event of its kind in the world let me tell you something if you haven't seen this you're missing something and if you've been here before and you're not here today mm. i can feel your pain so just go ahead and make your way down here because this is a place to be. Today, I'm joined here by my co-host, Rich Weber. And uh, we are really looking forward to our next guest um, because he has so much interesting information that everybody that flies, especially if you're around here uh, in, in Florida, although this can happen from anywhere in the country, but mainly the, the people in Florida, they're always dreaming to go to the Bahamas. And we have the person here today that can tell us exactly what is it we need to do, what are we going to find there, and how much fun we're going to have. And his name is Leonard Stewart, and he is the representative of the Bahamas here in Sun and Fun as an aviation specialist. Leonard, pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Diego. Welcome, Leonard. Thank you very much, Rick. I'm glad to be here. Good. Give us a little background about the, uh, the, the Bahamas tour industry, your actual organization, and kind of the mission, and, and uh, mostly we'll start with the background of, of what uh, you all provide. Okay, I'd just like to say on behalf of the uh, Commonwealth of the Bahamas, I'd just like to uh, thank you guys for allowing us to uh, be here to present ourselves at this prestigious event, the 39th Annual Sun and Fun. My name is uh, Leonard Stewart, and I work with the Aviation Division. I come from a little tiny island in the Bahamas, known as the Gateway to the Bahamas, and that the island is a beautiful island called Bimini. We have some 700 islands and keys in the islands of the Bahamas, and we invite all pilots and all enthusiasts to come to the island of the Bahamas. Our job is to come to a show like this to invite pilots and aviators to showcase the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. In uh, America, you have where you manufacture aircraft. In the Bahamas, we have the destination, the beautiful sun, sand, sea, <laughs> and our people. But we can go in depth at a little Absolutely. bit later. Where Thank you. you have the place to take the aircraft to. Exactly. Great. So, with the, so then your organization then helps provide uh, information for pilots to know how what steps are need to be taken to actually make the transition across the water over to the Bahamas. Right, we make make it somewhat easy. We have known as a, a pilot uh, uh, guide, basically known as a uh, pilot's bill of rights, and that's a uh, booklet that the uh, Bahamas Aviation. Uh, have put together. We have all the requirements that you would require from the IAPIS with what took place at 9-11. Now it, uh, the uh, manifest has to be electronically uh, advanced prior to going to the Bahamas. We have an easy checklist uh, for you to uh, apply and go to our website where you can get upfront information. Visit the Bahamas website www.bahamas.com forward slash flying and all the information and particulars are there for you to uh, guide you and make it easy to fly your aircraft to the Bahamas. Good. Excellent. And that's going to give them all the resources, the means to take it step by step of what they need to do to prepare to make it over. And then there's going to be the customs issue. Right. That's the easy part once you're going into the Bahamas. Now, <laughs> in our booklet also, we have added a C-7A, and that's the uh, form that you would need as a pilot, a, a private pilot, go into the Bahamas. You can download that form from our pilot guide that you can visit our boot at Sun and Fun at boots 65 and 66 and right here at the uh, Howard Hughes Museum. We have a station here where you can uh, come by and get your literature and all the information 
for the pilots. And we are advised that you fill that information out prior to arriving in the Bahamas because our main mission is to get you over there and get you on the beach and get you spending that money. And that's why we're here <laughs> to make sure that these things happen. Make it an easy transition. Make it an easy transition. We do all the logistics. All you have to do is pack your bag, get your money, your credit card, and we do the everything there for you. In fact, we roll the red carpet out treatment for you. Excellent. Now You forgot one thing, though. Bahama Mama. <laughs> well, the Bahama Mama will be there also. It'll be waiting. <laughs> now, so with the uh, with that website, can they also then uh, gather information as far as uh, locations for uh, hotels, you right. know, housing and restaurants? And right. Also dining? on the also on the uh, our website in, in, in the Bahamas, we have it strategically classified as Nassau or Paradise Island, which a lot of people know. When you hear Nassau, everything is Atlantis. Then we have the other. Uh, it's Grand Bahama Island. And then the other uh, is the Out Islands, basically known as the Family Island. And that's catered specifically mostly to the private pilots, where there's resorts uh, uh, anywhere from uh, fishing, diving, uh, snorkeling. Uh, there's a whole list of activities that you can find at our website uh, also. Now, on the website, is there going to be recommended um Airstrips, airports, landing areas that are maybe recommended as easy, easier or maybe more accessible or more pilot-friendly that would be beneficial than others? Well, basically in the Bahamas, we have over 60 um, airports. In the Bahamas, we have two control airports, which is Nassau and Grand Bahama Island. The other uh, airports in the Bahamas are ports of entry, and they are not controlled uh, uh, airport. But they are friendly, and basically um, everyone um, use the uh, courtesy where they notify uh, pilots of their uh, facilities upon landing as well as uh, taking off. That'll help a lot then. And that also, too, in a booklet also, you know, we have the um, runway, the uh, dimension of the uh, runway, and we have some of the uh, airports in the Bahamas as far as you don't want to go down there without fuel. Not all the airports in the Bahamas have fuel, mm -hmm. but with flying the islands of the Bahamas, within 20 minutes of any island, you, there is fuel there. So that won't be any uh, problem or issue for you. Good, good. Well, I know there's plenty of, uh, plenty of things to do in the Bahamas, so this will kind of give them an idea of what we can do, where we can stay, where we can eat, wh you know, where we can land and how we go about doing it. So they can make those arrangements either themselves or does your office also provide uh, like a, um, a service for that? Right, yeah. We have also known as a uh, fly-in. Uh, the islands of the Bahamas on a uh, bi-monthly, we have a uh, fly-in. Basically, it's an introductory for pilots who have never flown to the islands of the Bahamas. A lot of pilots are apprehensive about flying over water. So also we are uh, in partnership with FBOs in the southeast coast of uh, Florida, and they're known as Gateway FBOs. From Jacksonville, we have uh, Shelter and mm -hmm. Orlando. We have Show Walter. We have Fort Pierce in uh, Fort Lauderdale. We have Banyan, that's a part of us, and also in Fort Lauderdale, we have Shelter and Miami Executive down in Miami. So all of these are known as Gateway FBO, where they have knowledgeable customer service representative and managers that knows the islands of the Bahamas, and they can go in there also to basically gather um, information about flying the aircraft, uh, uh, accommodation, and anything mm -hmm. that they would like to do. But back to the uh, flying, we do a, a bi-monthly fly out to the islands of the Bahamas where you can visit our website and we have all the information up there posted. And myself along with our chief pilot, uh, Greg Roll, we assist these uh, pilots and we take them actually and introduce them where, how to fly prior to going to the Bahamas Basically, uh, there was a briefing that we would do prior to going over to the islands of the Bahamas, get, giving them all the information, follow all the customs and immigration forms and all of that, and assist you with that, show you the island so that next time you go, you won't need us to take you. And it's a fun thing, and it's an opportunity mm -hmm. for pilots to mix and mingle with other pilots while they're on the island. That's excellent. I think that are even showing on the on the teleprompter here that uh, or the the screen that some of the some of the highlights of, of the Bahamas, which is, uh, you can see that there's some of the, the airport information, some of the sites with, like you said, snorkeling, scuba diving, um, and all the different activities as well. Now let me go back and ask you a question. You talked about some of the, uh, the gateway airports over on the U.S. side. Now these also have custom uh, uh, offices, I guess, where they can also clear customs on the way back in as well if they go to one of these gateway airports. Right. Also, there is a... Uh, um 
Fort Lauderdale, uh, Hollywood, that's one of the gateways. And that's one of the reasons why we choose some of the gateways is that it's a one-stop shop mm -hmm. when you uh, uh, arrive back into the United States and the gateway work closely with the U.S. Customs and all of their uh, authorities. And also in the Bahamas, we do have uh, gateway FBOs as well. We have one on the island of uh, Eleuthera, we have, uh, which is known as uh, White Crown. Uh, Exoma is Odyssey. In Nassau uh, is Odyssey and Executive Flight Support, and also there's a new one that just uh, been relaunched in the island of Grand Bahama. So Grand Bahama have a new uh, mm. FPO there to uh, assist these uh, uh, pilots and aviators. Excellent. That's where they can, uh, like you said, a one-stop shop. They can come in, land, clear customs. Take the FBO is going to handle all their accommodations that they need, and then they're on their way to rest and relaxation. Right. And also here at the show, we also offer special. Uh, uh, a pilot special where you can uh, go into the islands of the Bahamas and visit the uh, Out Island or the Grand Bahama Promotion Board and all of those ho uh, hotel properties that are members. You stay four nights, you get $300 fuel credit back to your uh, aircraft or you can use it for your Rome nights. Also, we have established the uh, Bahamas Pilot Challenge. That's where we have 12 of, of 20 airports. You must land at uh, 12 of the 20 airports and you register with actually Pilot Mall that we are also partner with. You register by way of Pilot Mall and they give all the information there and you are uh, entered once you have covered 12 of the airport, your name is submitted where you have an opportunity to win eight Rome nights on the Out Island mm -hmm. and uh, four different islands, all free of charge. So it's a great opportunity to see the islands uh, in the Bahamas by registering and the registration is only like $40. That's a great incentive. Right. Absolutely. Well, so, I've been to the Bahamas myself. I haven't flown over there, but I've been there, and it's, it is a great place to see. Diego, have you spent some you time? You know, well, you and I have something in common. You're probably not aware of this, but I'm also an island boy okay. and from Cuba. I, I had the accent, and I realized it. You've got to pick up right. on that. Let me tell you, we, uh, when I moved to Florida, I, I, I uh, started to work for Showalter as a charter captain. Now, back in the 80s, 70s, late 70s and early 80s, there was no commuters going to the Bahamas. There was only Bahamas Air that had a couple flights from Miami and, uh, and I believe Fort Lauderdale. So everybody that wanted to go to the Bahamas had to go either charter or their own airplanes. Mm -hmm. So I got to really know mm -hmm. the islands because I, I, I used to fly there almost three or four times a week. And I fell in love with Marsh Harbor. It's a place there called Tilu Bank. I don't know if you ever, if you know where that is. It, it's like a swimming pool in the middle of the ocean, because it's like five feet of water, white sand, and it's like a pool. You just jump from the boat. And but the Bahamas has some. You, in, in your explanation, um, I think uh, you very explicit in all the things that you can do. But the best thing that you can do in the Bahamas is just to go and do nothing, <laughs> because you can really get away i mean it's it's just an unbelievable place when you mentioned um, uh eleuthera i went to a place there called oleander gardens uh back probably 12 15 years ago and i was wearing my watch and somebody woke up to me and says hey we don't wear watches here hmm. there was no tv no radio no newspapers nothing you just go there to relax and have a good time well, that's some of the things that the islands are so good for. Like you say, you can go to the islands of the Bahamas and basically just do nothing. And also there's uh, beaches out there where in America you have to get up early in the morning to get a spot on the beach. Right. The Bahamas, the beach belongs to you. You're there by yourself, basically. <laughs> Sometimes you're the only one. Exactly. Especially the ones that you go by boat, that you like little islands. Uh, it, there's nobody there. It's, it's only yourself. And also, too, uh, in the Bahamas, you know, we have a lot of people that sometimes they go there for the sun, sand, and the sea. And there's the other side of it is the, our cultural side of it, where you want to get into some of our, our, our cuisine, our food, and even mm. uh, uh, visiting our, our churches, our historic sites. And uh, fortunately, this year, we would be marking 40 years of independence and have already started in the Bahamas um, last year, we started in December, where the Paradise Island Bridge was named in honor of Sir Sidney Poitier, who is from the island of the Bahamas. Yep. Basically, you know, he was the uh, 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 first to uh, Afro-American to uh, uh, basically got an Academy Award, and he's yes. on the island of mm -hmm. the Bahamas. So now when you enter that bridge, you are now crossing over the Sydney Poitier Bridge in Nassau. So that's that? just one of the many things that is in conjunction with 
with the Bahamas as we celebrate our 40th anniversary of independence. A very important point that I want to make for the viewers uh, is that the hospitality, the people, the people in the Bahamas, they go beyond the call of duty to make you feel good in their country. And that's something that I experience there every time I go, because I'm hooked. I mean, I go there at least two, three times a year. So uh, uh, this is something that our uh, uh, viewers need to know that the hospitality there is way, way, way above the norm. So if you can exp uh, uh, expand on that a little bit. Right. Thank you for that. And, and, and uh, basically what you said is that you go there and you basically get hooked. And, you know, a lot of the times you meet people as friends. One day, next day, you, you become family because it just goes uh, to you. You know, you, they open up your, your home to you and. You know, in the Bahamas, we say tourism is everybody's business. Yes. In the Bahamas, we have roughly 360,000 people. And, and uh, basically, that is a, a, a true notion. You know, anywhere in the islands of the Bahamas you go, you can ask anyone on the, side, on the street or wherever, where is such and such a place, and everybody can point that out to you there. And that is so good about it. And, and, and that's basically what it is. You know, no one is different. They don't look about the, the color of, or, or whatever, but it's just you as a human being, and you are more than welcome as you go to the, in particular, the family island, which is much more close-knitted. You know, you have yes. people wow. that goes to these islands, and they know the bartender, they know the maids, <laughs> and they know everyone. They know their kids when they were born, and those kids grow up to become lawyers, doctors, and all of that type of stuff, so that's the close-knit that, that we have, and that's what a lot of people also come for, too, as well. I would like to share uh, a little story uh, to corroborate on, on, on the hospitality thing because when we were at the Luthera, and of course that was just a, a getaway uh, time just to do not, just to relax. We didn't go on a boat, we, didn't, we went to the beach and we went swimming, but we didn't go diving or anything like that. We're just relaxing. But there was a restaurant that was about a mile and a half from Oleander Garden. So my wife and I, we wouldn't believe this, we got up in the morning and she draws a hush cart. Thing. Mm -hmm. And we're playing hodgepodge on the street <laughs> because you take a piece of rock over there and it's like chalk, and then yeah, you can you can ride on the on the pavement. And we're playing hodgepodge, so we said, "Well, it's time to go to have breakfast." So we start walking. It's about a mile and a half, and we figure it's a good exercise. We were asked more than four times for to. Do you need a ride? People stop. You want to ride? Where are you going? Because they, like he said, tourism is their business it's their life and they will go overboard to make you feel wanted and not only that they, they, they want to make sure that you're going to come back that you don't mm -hmm. go to some other islands so you go there Good. and then just their nature just exactly. their nature and also one of the things too is that once you go to the bahamas don't care if you are in a wheelchair you sick you laid up in bed you must have that uh, song of that junk and beat that musical yep. thing and we have it Basically, twice a year, if you are in the island of Nassau, basically it's known as Boxing Day, and that's, that is the day after Christmas, December the 26th, and the other day is basically January 1st in New Year, and that's an opportunity where you have groups uh, wanting bragging rights. You have any group membership, anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 members with strong uh, uh, musical brass, the goatskin drum, the shaking off the cowbells and it's pulsating sound <laughs> wherever you are you have to move yes and i was Good. part of that on a on a new year's uh we spent in marsh harbor actually uh and and it goes all the way around the town and ends up at city hall at three o'clock in the morning you know yeah. we started they started like around 12 12 right. midnight right at midnight and it's the most incredible thing because you get caught up in the moment and 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 you just go and it's music and and if you don't like music if you don't like music, you, you start moving. You will like and, music when you're done. Oh, yeah. And if you like music, you join the, and you go. And, and it's just a tremendous thing. It's just a fun islands. Every island there is fun islands. And I'm really, really glad that you, uh, that you guys are here. We miss Greg because, uh, you know, I'm used to seeing him, and him uh, um, uh, every year, you know, well, coming he, over. Greg is there, but he's just on special assignment that he had to go back down and okay. uh, do some other work. But hopefully he should be up there by, uh, later on. Uh, today Good. came up uh, uh, originally when we came up on on, uh, on Monday morning. Good. Good. Now this, I just wanted to kind of uh, clarify one thing so our viewer, viewers and the pilot population understand this. Uh, go ahead and explain a little bit more about the Gateway Airports 
from the United States and the airports in the Bahamas so that they really understand what that means. Well, basically the uh, gateway, as, uh, as you mentioned, is, is basically those uh, FBOs that are basically uh, where there's custom facilities are there. And also gateway FBOs, uh, uh, basically they are preferred gateways FBOs of the Bahamas because one, what we do is we educate the uh, customer service personnel so they have a little more knowledge than the regular gateway would, would, would offer to you. Mm -hmm. We do a, a special training with them during the year and then at the end of the year, we take those customer service through the islands of the Bahamas. We fly them uh, around the islands of the Bahamas, show them the islands so that they will have a better take and a better understanding of the island and they can come back and explain to the customers as they come into their with gateway questions. with questions and they can recommend those special things for them. You can go, as you mentioned, to the Oleander place, Dang and Elutra, all those places. They had first-hand knowledge and information about it and they come back real excited and you have all of the customer service and now jockeying now to do well so that they can get this trip and basically this trip is hosted by the uh, Bahamas Ministry of Tourism and it's a free trip for those customer service personnel so it's an opportunity for them to have vacation and enjoy the island free of charge on our behalf but basically deep down they're waiting for us in the Bahamas because all of those other rest of the days they are there spreading the message of mm -hmm. as we keep saying it's better in the Bahamas that's right absolutely and that gives them also with having the gateway FBOs and their knowledge is better for the pilots because then they can receive the information that they need the questions that can be answered rather than a pilot just going to one of the other airports along the coast to make that transition over exactly there. right they assist them and make it easy and so for them and also too we, we with the with the gateway we have special arrangement and special treatment prior to them arriving in the bahamas if we have some dignitary or something special we notify the gateway ahead of time so that when they arrive it's a shock to them when they arrive Oh, welcome to uh, Elutra. It makes them feel special. It makes them feel special. Happy anniversary. Ah, you there guys. you go. So we, we can do those type of things and stuff like that. Exactly. Now, uh, I'm thinking as a pilot now, and I want you to kind of uh, elaborate a little bit on, the, uh, for instance, uh, maintenance. If, if I need maintenance, let's say that uh, my airplane breaks down or there's something wrong with my airplane, uh, would you like to uh, uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Yes. Um, in the uh, uh, bah uh, Bahamas, uh, in the major islands, uh, Nassau, uh, uh, Grand Bahama Island, uh, Exuma Island, even this island of Bimini where I'm from, there is a uh, maintenance uh, mechanic guy that's, that's there at the uh, airport. He's stationed there from sun up to sundown, basically. Mm. But in the event there is something major uh, to your aircraft, uh, long as you're landed in the Bahamas, uh, you might have connection with a service outside of the uh, uh, Bahamas and the United States. The Bahamas government would waive any uh, duty or, or tariff on any uh, parts that you might have coming in to assist you to get your aircraft back up and, oh, running that's and ready good. to get back out. That's good. 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 Now, um, elaborate a little bit on, uh, on, on uh, the process of uh, uh, immigration and, um, and customs. Uh, that, uh, that's really a an easy thing to go through. Sometimes people are, uh, they get kind of concerned as, well, I got to go over there and I got to take to the immigration people and the custom people. Just go ahead and elaborate a little bit on yeah. that and let them know how that really like works. Like I said, one of the, one of the easiest way to uh, avoid that is one is to, uh, and also you can go online and download the uh, custom form. And one of the things to, uh, to help ease that burden for you is to try one of our fly-ins that, that we have. Once we have our fly-in, that's an introductory where we go through all the paperwork and it guides you along the way you're, you're not pressured because you know a lot of people going into foreign country they're not familiar with all of the question that may be asked of them on, on different terminology and stuff so basically we can do that for you or even you can call our office in uh, in, in Florida uh, that that we have there 1-800 number in, in Florida and we can assist you there but it, it's 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 a easy process and it take a few minutes to fill out the C7A if you are a, a private uh, aircraft going into the island of the Bahamas and once you uh, arrive there with your paperwork and even the custom and immigration, they would also assist you if this is your first time. If you explain, say, look, this is my first time coming in. I, I don't know all the procedures and they would walk you through it because mm -hmm. if they don't come in there, then they won't be sitting behind the desk to, ha to have a uh, job. So basically, we try to open up to everyone and make it as seamless as possible. And let them in that way they can find out what, what kind of documentation is necessary. Driver's license, passport, whatever right. well, it may basically, be. Basically, driver's license is no longer the... Uh, you must have a, uh, a valid passport. passport. 
in order to enter yeah. the Allen Bombers. And again, that's where the Gateway FBO comes in. They are knowledgeable over on this side. So if you go into one of our Gateway in the United States, you can get all the briefing and they can give you all the assistance right there so that when you get into the Bahamas, you would avoid that hassle. And that's the advantage of going to the website that's because you can find out, oh, I need a passport. So you can, you know, months ahead of time, go ahead and get your passport and get ready if you plan to have a uh, upcoming you know, vacation yes. over there. Right, exactly. Leonard, what what island are you from? I'm from the island of Bimini, known as the gateway to the Bahamas. And uh, if I go there, where can I have the best salad, uh, conch salad? Well, I'm going to tell you, my brother George conch salad. He has the best conch salad on the island. <laughs> and the name? His name is Fabian Stewart. Fabian? Fabian. 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 I'm going to be there because I'll tell you, I love that conch salad. Every time I go there... Anything that has to do with conch. Remember, I was born and raised on the beach. So I just made my transition to Newark, New Jersey, from 86 degrees to 11 degrees and ice on the street. That was a cultural shock. <laughs> Leonard, unfortunately, we have reached that point in the interview where we really have to say goodbye. And uh, I really, really enjoy the conversation. I really enjoy your explanations. And our audience is probably enjoy every minute of it. And maybe we raise their confidence to get in that airplane and make that leap. Okay, just everyone just do as Doug said and come to the beautiful islands of the Bahamas. It is better in the Bahamas. Roger. Thank you. And Absolutely. you, you stay put because we're going to be back in a few minutes and we have a whole bunch of other information for you to give you. See you in a bit.